Uh, honey, I have a question. Um, how do you feel when anybody makes a vow and they can't keep the vow or it's a promise, they can't keep the promise unto God or even unto yourself? Um, I think a lot of times we make a vow based on the current feelings or the current situation that we're in at that moment and not make the vow or decision based upon realistic, you know, like you, I feel like, you know, yourself more than anyone knows you and you know what you're going to keep or not. And for you to make a vow based on current feelings rather than kind of like thinking it through and um, really just thinking about the outcome that could potentially come if you really don't keep that vow that you said you were going to keep. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we just make a rational decision or say something from our lips and we don't even really mean it. And we don't even know what we're really saying. I think that um, I've struggled with that in my life. Make promises that I really couldn't keep. But I've made promises to where I, the intention is to, come, is to always come through. Right? But sometimes things switch and things change. And like the circumstances is different from the actual, from what I initiated first in my mind. Like, yeah, I can go ahead and keep that promise or I can make sure that I'm here. Or I can make sure that I'm there, you know, and it didn't actually happen. Right. And, but the one thing that I learned, like with those particular promises, it's always been about making sure that you repent from that promise versus digging yourself into a deeper hole. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kenneth Allen Thomas. This is my wife, Jocelyn, and we are the Thomases. Welcome to another episode of the Unshakable Conversations with Kenny and Josie. And we are here and we're going to talk about some things today. We're going to talk about those promises in your faith. We're going to talk about promises in marriage, relationships, right? And even promises in parenting. I read a scripture today um, in Judges chapter 11 that kind of sparked that. And, you know, for myself, I'm like, man, this is so good that we got to share it with, with the people, right? So, babe, I was um, reading Judges chapter 11 in Jepeth. Uh, I think that's how you say his name. I think that's how you say his name. I think, so. I think that's how you say his name. Anyway, check this out when y'all get a chance. But Jepeth, pretty much, this guy was born, um, you know, his, his mom was a prostitute, right? And we keeping it all the way funky today, y'all. <laughs> his mom is a prostitute and... Um, he has these half brothers and these half brothers pretty much are like, listen, you know, we don't even want you in the family because of your mom. So first and foremost, my man is already off the rip, like an outcast. Right. And we both have they rejected felt, him. You rejected. We, we've all felt rejection. We've all felt like, dang, I don't belong here or whatever, because oh, of goodness. a circumstance that I didn't have no dealings with. So the question really becomes is how many times do you. Uh, are you in a position and you are rejected from something and you need nothing to do with that? Yes, the circle rejection. you're around. The circle you're around, right? So make a long story short, pretty much. He is a mighty man of valor. For those that don't know, that is a mighty man of God. That is like a, a mighty warrior, right? And he ends up, uh, you know, his the elders or whatever end up asking him to, hey, can you help us with this particular battle, mm -hmm. right? I'm paraphrasing. But go to Judges 11 and read it for yourself. Can you help us with this particular battle? And he's on some, like, what do y'all, what do, what, why do I got to help y'all? Y'all rejecting, y rejecting me. Y yeah, like, <laughs> he's like, so let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Y'all want, y all want oh, Now y'all want my help. How many people out there have ever felt rejected and then the people that rejected you now want your help, right? What do you do? This is where, you know, real faith actually has to come into play because you got to be, like really like humble humbled 
and humble to be like, you know what? I'm going to help you anyway, even though you played. Yeah. So he ends up, um, you know, helping them out and win, winning the battle. They said, if you win this battle, we'll make you ruler. We'll make you the judge, pretty much. So he was the ninth judge um, in that time. And he ended up being, you know, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and everything. And uh, there comes another battle that he has to take on. And, you know, he asked the Lord, if you help me with this battle, with this victory, if you give me victory over these people, then I will, when I come back home, the first thing that comes out of my house to greet me, I'm going to make a sacrifice unto you. And I'm going to offer it to you as a burnt offering. Now he's making a vow. He's making a promise. Mm -hmm. He is sitting there saying, first thing that comes out, boom, I'm giving it all glory to God or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Not knowing what was going to come out. So what ends up happening is he ends up, uh, you know, coming back home after God gave him the victory. And it what and who comes out? His daughter. His daughter comes out. Now it's getting deep. Now it's getting like, hold up now. Like, I gotta sacrifice my what? <laughs> my daughter. Like, this is crazy. Like, God, I didn't I didn't mean it like that. And this is where it comes in, right? Now you can't go back on your word. <laughs> you can't go back on your word because this is what you said, right? Meanwhile, understand this. He only had one child. His daughter was his only child. So are you so pressed to manipulate God with your vow and with your promise just to get what you want? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the re I, one can make an argument that the rejection that he was facing, that he was battling, was, you know, kind of got to his head or whatever. And now it's like, I'm going to make sure y'all all know who I am type of thing. Right? I'm not saying that this is what it was, but could be. But God didn't tell him to sacrifice his daughter, though. Mm -hmm. Right. There's nowhere in scripture or whatever that says that God told him to do this. But that was the first thing that came out. Right. That was the first person that came out to greet him. And the Bible says that he was distraught. He was he was uh, tore, tore his clothes off, like in distress or whatever. All of this in this like, man, why do I got to do this? Or why did I do this? Is That's what I'm thinking. If I'm him. That's what I'm thinking. He was like, daughter, why did you come out? Yeah, yo. He was with the, he was with the, he had the whole dr dramatics on there and everything. Like, why would you come out here? You don't know what kind of stress you've caused me. What you mean? What type of stress you've caused me? You don't want to whatever that made the promise not me. She out there, whatever, tune her horn and everything, right? And what I, what I thought was crazy is as I dove deeper into this, and we talked about this this morning. Why didn't he just repent? Yeah. It, is it so hard for people to actually repent from the promise that they make to God? Is God would probably have would probably rather you repent than go through with a promise that He know that you really can't keep and that you really shouldn't have, you should really shouldn't have promised that to me in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But the question becomes is. How does that pertain to marriages? You know, how does it pertain to parenting or our faith? You know, so I give you the word and everything on that. I talked a lot. <laughs> um, I think that's good. I think like in parenting, a lot of times, like, you know, if our kid asks us, like, for instance, hey, can you like take me to the park? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now I'm doing something, but I promise tomorrow I'm going to take you. And then tomorrow comes and you get caught up and busy again. And then you're like, you, your kid's like, I, you said, you know, you was going to take me to the park. Why aren't you taking me now? You know, mm -hmm. I promise I'll take you the next. It's like you keep on promising these things that you can't fulfill just because you're in the moment mm -hmm. rather than really thinking, looking at your schedule and being like, OK, I can take you to the park on this day because this is the day that's free and open rather than making all these broken promises that you can't keep. I feel like it makes the kid be like looking at you like a liar yeah. <laughs> and kids don't forget. Yeah. You know, kids don't forget. They're going to hold you to what you said 100%. that you were going to do. 100%. Yeah. And listen, like, I'm I'm guilty of it, right? I'm guilty of someone who's made promises, couldn't keep them. I think we've all been there or whatever. We've made these promises that we can't yeah. keep. But it's all about, again, it goes back to your intent. But at the same time, 
your intent and actually what you're going to do, you could, they got to equal up. I remember like growing up in my like maybe preteen to teenage years, maybe even some young, young adult years, you know, obviously I grew up in church since we were like maybe six, seven, we were in a church. And so at that age, I really like, I knew about God, but I didn't have a relationship with God. Right. And there were things that I did that I knew I shouldn't have done. And, you know, if I was in a bad situation, I would be like, I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me. I promise, I promise I'll do this if you get me out of this situation. Mm -hmm. And then I would get out that situation mm -hmm. and the promise I made. Never came to fruition. I probably didn't remember even the promise that I made. Like, mm -hmm. that's how, you know what I'm saying? So I was even that person way back when. Mm -hmm. Um but it goes to show that, yeah, we all have been there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think that this is a valuable lesson for, you know, people that are married, right? Especially the husbands out there, you know, like, if we say that we're going to do something for our wives, don't have the expectation being it's going to happen next week, what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, me personally or whatever, I don't like to set dates necessarily on when something is going to be done because you're going to be expecting me to come through on that. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes on the flip side, it is good to set a date. But after you have taken some time to think about it, yeah. because at the same time, you can also be held accountable. Yeah. Because if you just don't set a date and be like, all right, one day we're going to do this, one day we're going to do that, one day, one day, that one day could turn into five years and we still haven't done it. Yeah. But if you say, all right, babe, let me check my calendar. Let me make sure we have enough funds to do whatever it is, whatever the case is, you right. know, and set a date, then I know that it's not just talk. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's not going to happen next week, right. but I know that it's going to happen maybe in two months because we've planned for it. We set aside money for it. We put the time and I, and now you're being held accountable where time isn't just flying by and yeah. it's just not happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think that when it comes to God, like, I think people try and, I, and I use this like this or whatever, you try to take advantage of God in his kindness and you and people try to manipulate but you can't manipulate what he already knows mm -hmm. right you can't necessarily manipulate god or whatever and think that he's some genie in a bottle and make these promises that you know you're not going to keep like for example or whatever maybe you somebody or whatever that's out there and you're you know you having it out with these women or you having it out with these men, you know what I'm saying? And you'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, after this, I promise I'm not going to do it no more. I promise I'm not going, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have sex with this guy no more. I'm not going to have sex with this girl no more. No more girls got until I get married. No more, like, yeah, but like you, you saying that or whatever, but the next genre or whatever that pull up on you, you know what I'm saying? You right there. And then the next one, and then the next one, and the next one, and then lo and behold, before you know it, something could be happening where maybe you got this girl pregnant. Maybe you got pregnant by this guy. Maybe, unfortunately, something happened or whatever from a health standpoint that you don't know. Like, this is why it's, we, we have to be careful. And yeah. I'm learning this even to this day, to be careful with our words and be slow to speak. You know, the the one guy um, that helped us get the uh, get the studio back in the day, he, he taught me, um, he said, Kenny, when you're in business, and when you are negotiating, right, don't ever necessarily set a date on when, like, a payment is going to come through if it, if you know that it's up in the air, right? Say something along the lines of um, using the word intent. It is our intention to pay on such and such date. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. way, if if it doesn't happen, right, from the wording on the contract of what it says, right? You're not held accountable or whatever for holding a promise that was never really a promise, That's right? Cool. So using the word intent, it's my intention to pay you on X, Y, and Z or whatever. But hey, listen, 
uh, something could go down or whatever in between then before this transaction gets through, right? Like we just we just sold our home. The intended date for us to close was October 15th. However, because something went down in the transaction from a third party that didn't have paperwork in line and in order for the transaction to go through, guess what? That date got pushed back about four days. You know what I'm saying? But it was the intent for us to close on that day. Mm -hmm. I think if we start using words that are like that, it, it doesn't give, it doesn't, um, we're not it, it expected, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like for for example, like with my son, with, with JJ, like I don't, I'm very careful when I promise something to him. Like if I say and I'm gonna do it, I gotta do it. I gotta do it because he is going to sit here and hold it to the to the cows come home. You said that you're going outside with me to play football, and you need to come on because that's what you said. Right. So, or I'll just flat out be like, no, I'm not going to work. Like, I'm not even going to like, get your hopes up <laughs> to be like, yo, like this is going to happen or whatever. Because if I do, then I got to hold that down. Knowing I got all this other stuff and everything that I got to handle. So, I, but when I do go outside, I'd be like, all right, Jay, let's go. We got, we got about 30 minutes before we, before I have to, you know, do X, Y, and Z. So we got to be careful with that. You know, I, I just think that we, you know, as parents and we are in a relationship, like we got to make sure that we're careful with our words, you know, moving forward because it's people will take them things yeah. to heart. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to be able to hold yourself up. Like, well, you're going to be held accountable mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You're going to be held accountable. So that's just, <laughs> psh, listen, man. But anyway, I wanted to talk about a couple other things and everything, you know, with, with our move here, like we have found so many people that are inspired. Yeah. Right. So I'm not sure about, you know, you or whatever, but like, um, I know you've had your share of conversations. I've had my share of conversations and so many people are inspired by the move. And the question becomes is how come people don't just move period? I'm not saying move like across state or anything like that. What I'm saying is why, why do you feel people are so like stuck in their ways? Fixed mindset. I think, um, I think people are very afraid in general, um, to make a move unknown. Like I know for me personally, it was really hard because, um, I've always been the type of person to want to have control over things yep. or just kind of like um, see everything laid out. Not that it has to be planned to the T every single step, but I would like some form of a roadmap uh, or, you know, some form of plan that we can execute that I can look at, look on paper. You know, that's just how I am. Mm -hmm. Um and I didn't, we didn't have that, you know? And so for <laughs> us, it was really hard because I'm like, Amen. I'm like, Lord, we don't have like anything to go by. Mm -mm. And it was really, truly a walk of a thousand percent faith yeah. and trust in God. Yeah. It was, all, and I'm like telling God, like, okay, but you had us kind of like on this journey with Christian and we trusted you. Mm -hmm. we had faith that you were going to heal him. Yeah. But he was like, yeah, but this is another level of faith. This is, level. this is another level of trust. See, let me stop you there because with Christian, we had a roadmap. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a roadmap. We had a plan, mm -hmm. but we, there was a plan. So, but even still with that, we had a plan, but we weren't sure if he yeah. would be healed we was a hundred percent or how it's going to go. It could have went so many different ways. The roadmap was just a plan of the medications that he was going to be giving, right. what time the date scheduled and all that. And right. it, it still wasn't even fully followed because he beat cancer and had yeah. the time projected all that, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so I mean, no, I know that, but what I was trying to say was, is that, it was something that we had to look at, like we kind of knew. With this, we didn't. Yeah. 
like toss the roadmap out the door to get your little plan or whatever. <laughs> like you think that you want to sit there and do this on your own. You're not like, I'm, I hate to bust your bubble, Kenny and Josie, but it's not happening this time. All the planning that you're trying to do and everything on your own. Listen, I'm taking over. I'm making sure that this is going down my way, not your way, right? This is Yahweh, not your way. But I do feel that if we would have planned, yeah. we probably wouldn't have gone through with it. Because we said, you know, oh, we're going to stay in Jersey for a year. Then we'll plan our move to Texas and all that. Right. And the other was like, nope, because if you stay for a year, you're going to get too comfortable. You're not going to move. You're eventually going to get comfortable again in that year yeah. and not want to move. And then it'll be another year and then another right. year. Right. And it, so it goes to show, like, some people out there, y'all y'all saying that y'all want to start a business. What's really stopping you at the end of the day? Right. You're going to wait another six months at your job that you don't want to be yet because you're comfortable about the consistent finances and everything that's coming in. It's you, almost like you're, never a perfect time it's for never, anything. Whether it's you're never trying, a perfect time. Yeah. Whether you're trying to start a business, get in shape have a child, buy a home, um, start a new career, whatever the case is, I just feel like sometimes there's never the perf when it when is the perfect time. Yeah. When but for you, right, I feel like even for you, I felt like this was a great, great move and a great time because you, you like again, like you said earlier, you're you like to have control. But she was forced to let go. Yes. Like everything, you know yeah. what I'm saying. But how was that? Like, how it did you? It was feel? hard. Yeah, I, I wanted to throw in the towel mm -hmm. a lot. I wanted to say, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm not doing this. I don't think we're moving. I think we're gonna, you know, eventually stay in Jersey. Um, like this isn't gonna work. Um, it was really a lot. It was very emotional for me. Um, there were a lot of tears shed. I was angry some days. I was upset some days in pain some days, frustrated, confused, um, just very, um, I don't know, it was just a lot of mixed emotions involved for me. Um, but yeah, it was really hard to let go of control. It was yeah. really hard to trust and fully, fully trust. So with this, right, the challenges that are ahead that we don't even know of yet, I believe that God is going to say, I need you to revert back to this moment. But that's going to be hard as well, too. Yes, it is. But you have, like, you can't, like, you got, like, it's almost like, yo, there's no way that you can't believe <laughs> that he's not going to do it again. Like, he's going to do it again. But he's going to do it differently, right? He's never going to do the same thing, you know, twice. But that's just how diverse or whatever God it's is. It's like in the chaos and in the seasons of the unknown, um, he wants me personally to just be at peace and have peace of mind and say, Lord, I know you're going to do it. I don't know how, I don't know when, and I don't know why, mm -hmm. but you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And although that's hard for me, I know that 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 that's what he's saying for me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's something that I struggle with. Yeah. And I think that admitting the struggle is like one of the biggest um, things that you could actually do because it's like part of like self-reflection. Right. I tell people all the time, you know, when when I work and go to different conferences or things like that, the first thing that you got to do is self-reflect. You got to look at your own struggle. And you got to sit there and come to grips and say, this is what I'm struggling with. And this is what I need to fix. Like, I can't do this by myself. But that's the point. I believe that God is sitting there saying, I don't want y'all to do this by yourselves. I need y'all to, I need y'all to let me guide you. Let me lead you, right? He wasn't controlling us. He was guiding us, right? Now you have the choice to, to not take the guidance. It's almost like how we got our children. You could not take the guidance. But I felt like in this season, it was on some, I personally felt that there ain't no way that God is going to let us drown. Yeah. There, there's just, just no way. I don't see God sitting there saying or putting us in a position where we wasn't going to be without shelter, where we wasn't going to be without finances, where we wasn't going to be without food, where we wasn't going to, like, there's just no way. But for me, the biggest, biggest, biggest step was booking that flight. That was the biggest thing for me. I know. And my heart sank. I know. <laughs> you know? And I'm I was, like, 
do we have protection on them flights? Like, yo, <laughs> do we I'm have like, cancellation? Oh my God. I was just sitting here like, yo, God, you really want me <laughs> to book this flight? But he's been so faithful so in faithful. Uh, so many little things in our life. Like, yeah. throughout these, you know, I'm speaking the time we've been together because he's been faithful yeah. ever since, obviously, we were born. Yeah. But I'm speaking in the time that we've been together where even, like, our hardest of hardest of hardest financial moments yeah. where, you know, just recently mm -hmm. um, in Jersey where there were days where we were like, how are we going to eat tonight? Mm -hmm. Like, how are we going to eat tonight? Like, we don't even have This is not an exaggeration, yo. <laughs> like, we don't have anything to eat. Yeah. We, we like, we just don't have it. What are we going to eat? And he always... And he always provided. We have never yeah. missed a meal yeah. to the glory of God. Amen. We have never missed a meal. Amen. Whether it was something that we had in our cabinets that we had to, you know, whip up and be very, um, like... <laughs> How you call it? Like, I don't know. Creative. Creative. Um. How many times? <laughs> hold up. How many times have you? Have we? Y'all remember this back in the day, right? Where you've been in the crib, and it seems like you ain't got no food, but mom go ahead and whip something up out of nowhere, <laughs> like. And it's not like it's not out of nowhere. It's just that's the food that we actually had. We just didn't want to cook it. Yeah, that's that's that was my dad, and I learned that from my dad. You know, my dad, man, when we we was close to poor growing up, mm. and my dad would whip something up out of nothing, literally like nothing, mm. and it was good. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm not talking about bread and butter with water because we did eat that a lot of times. That was lunch or dinner for a lot of times. I'm mm. be, I'm being very honest. Mm. Bread with butter, mm. toasted, mm. and water was our meal sometimes. Yeah, that's how bad it was. And um, but it could have been worse. Mm -hmm. We could have not had anything. Yeah. But I've learned from my dad like to whip up something out of nothing. Mm. You know. Yeah. You know, I've learned that. Be grateful for every meal, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. right? And be grateful for every moment, even in the moments of triumph, even in the moments of challenges, because two things are going to happen. Either A, you're going to falter, you're going to fail, you're going to give up, you're going to stop trying. Or B, you're going to face that challenge, you're going to overcome that challenge, and, you're gonna, and, and God is going to make you victorious over that challenge. So you can either go one way or the other, right? The the thing that I appreciate the most is the challenges that I'm presented because that's another opportunity for God to show off through me, right? And oftentimes people don't embrace those challenges. That's why we should embrace the challenge because it gives God another opportunity to show off through you. He chose you because he has given you the opportunity to glorify, to, to glorify him, in him in every situation, no matter what it looks like, right? So instead of uh, weeping and crying and being like, you know, woe is me in this particular situation, yo, invite the smoke. Invite the smoke to come on in. Embrace the challenge that's coming on in. Because, listen, I'm going to be real with y'all. We never really... We thought that we can obtain, you know, something like what we're in right now, but we never really, it was just like, ah, can we really do it? You know, but we still worked at it, even though we was like, I don't know if I'll ever really attain this thing, yeah. but I'm going to work my butt off to, you know, be in a more comfortable situation so that my kids can grow up comfortably mm -hmm. so that I have more opportunities so that we can create more opportunities, right? So that we can be lenders and not borrowers, right? And that's really what, you know, our mindset is. We want to be the lenders. We want to be the ones to, to lend out or whatever. We don't want to be the borrowers or anything, anything like that, but we want to be the ones to be able to give as much as we can here on this earth, whether it's something that's monetary, whether it's something spiritually, whether it's physically, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we want to be able to, to to hand that out. But I want to I want to shift it right because in most situations that we were in, I'm gonna be real. That's when the most divorces would probably happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
I right? think even before the situation. Yeah, because people are going to look at those finances and they're like, this ain't going to work. This ain't, this ain't working. This ain't working. And I think our biggest challenge has been finances. Yeah. And I feel like so many marriages would have been crumbled. Oh, yeah. 100%. I, I firmly believe 100% that most marriages would have just been like, you know what, I'm just going to pack it in because this is not working. I can't do this. Yeah. Right? The reality is that you can. You just don't want to. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's just be clear. It's not that you can't get through with with uh, a challenging situation financially. You don't want to. Right? And that's the difference. When you don't want to do something, why did you sign up for it in the first place? If you sit there and say, and this is, goes back to the beginning of our conversation, we make vows that we can't keep. Mm -hmm. You sit here in front of a pastor or in front of an authoritative figure, but more importantly, you sit there and say vows unto the Lord and saying through thick and through thin, for better or for worse. But when worse happens, what you going to do? Mm -hmm. When worse happens and everything, you want to pack it up and, and no, like you can't do that, right? It, it, listen. Like when we talk about, you know, people breaking up marriages and things like that, you're breaking a whole covenant at the end of the yeah. day. God didn't break a covenant with you. Yeah. Right. Now it's different when it's like, all right, like the exceptions, there are exceptions to the rule, obviously, right? Where maybe there's physical abuse that's involved. Maybe there's, you know, infidelity that, that that's involved or whatever heavily and stuff like that. So understandable, right? But if it's just y'all and we rock it out and we ain't got it together yet, maybe I didn't learn this when I was growing up. So it's taking me a little longer. I've been living 30 plus years and I never learned this. So you think that just because a person has been living 30 plus years or whatever, they're within one year, they're going to have it all together. Think about that. It is frustrating, though. Like for me personally, you know, a lot of times in our marriage, it's been, it was frustrating. Yeah. I'd, I'd be sitting here lying if I said that it was super easy and I it never not, it was not easy. thought, no. like, you know, there have been times where the finances was so frustrating where I'm just like, do, yeah. do we even be in this marriage? Do you think that we should like, yes. do we want to keep on going like this? Like, is this realistically going to work? Like all of this stuff, yeah. but it, that's the flesh. Mm -hmm. We have a flesh. The Lord made us that way, you know? Um, but at the same time, it is our business to get in God's face and on our feet, on our knees and mm -hmm. be like, Lord, yes, help me through this. Help me through it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I love my husband. Our issue is finances. Help us through this, you know? Help me fight this temptation. Help me, you know, fight this flesh. Help me remember my vows that mm. I made on that day. Mm. Help me remember the promises, the covenant that I have, you know, made with, with this man that you have brought brought me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, realistically, it's not easy mm -hmm. to just breeze on by and say, oh, our finances are the worst thing, but, mm -hmm. you know, but we're going to keep on keeping on. You know, it's not always easy. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, a lot of people do give up. A lot of people throw in the towel because they're, they don't want to work at it. They don't want to fight for their marriage. They don't want to mm. fight to say one day, right now it looks like this, but in 10 years, in 20 years, look where we have come. Yeah. You know, I love you so much if I stuck with you through the hard, if I stuck with you through the poor times, if I stuck with you through the rough times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's... You know, you saying that, that's one of the reasons why I go so hard, like for real, for you, because we slept in a twin bed mattress together, you know what I'm saying, for a, we ate real humble pie in a, I don't know, that, that room that we I was in. I the picture the other day. Oh, yeah, you did. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it was just, it was literally, you walk in. It was Javion's playpen. It yes. was our twin size yep. bed, and it was your desk and the TV. Up. I gotta put. I gotta post that it is. on there. I gotta post it on there so y'all gotta see it. That so maybe you're seeing it right here. This is our room right here. Like this is it, and this is what we what we lived in. Kids sleeping on a couch for a year, right? And that's how I knew that no matter what, no matter how bad it looked, I'm going to do everything possible 
to make sure that we are never in that situation ever again to make sure that you have all that you need right and that the kids have all that they need right so i'm no longer in the business of waiting on people to give me an opportunity i'm coming in to take it yeah right i'm you know i'm putting it out there like yo and i'm and i'm i'm being humble about you know each and every opportunity that i get but at the same time i'm gonna go get it mm -hmm. like no matter what um you know fighting against the temptations of wanting to oh yeah I don't know. I just feel like the easy way out. Oh, yeah. Is to just give up. Because this generation that we live in now. Yeah. They want everything easy. But I feel like if you're not dealing yeah, with this sure. problem, if you're not dealing with this problem in, in your next marriage or your next relationship, you're dealing with something else. Yeah. It may not be finances, but you're dealing you're with something else. You're going to deal with something else. Yeah. No relationship, no marriage, nothing is perfect. Yeah. Cheaper to keep a baby. It's cheaper to keep a <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> It's cheaper to keep a that part. So that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I feel like, you know, I've seen people go through marriages and just not being, not willing to work it out at all. My question is, is why did you get married in the first place? Because you thought that you was going to have this fairy tale ending and you was going to not have any challenges at all. You thought that, you know, the party that you invited 200 plus people to, that you fed everybody to, right? The little honeymoon that you was on and all of that. Listen, me and you, we have never even taken a honeymoon. We ain't never take a t taking a honeymoon. Mm. And that's no no slide or whatever to anybody that has. But what I'm saying is, is that we didn't let the honeymoon or whatever be the end all be all or anything like that. We like it wasn't like a make or break for us. It wasn't like a necessity and everything for us, because at the end of the day, like if you're really in love, you're going to be on a honeymoon no matter what for the rest of your life. Yeah. Right. And I feel like I feel like. Even even when you're in love, I'm not saying that those challenges aren't going to happen. People fight on their honeymoon, mm -hmm. right? People go at it on on their, in their honeymoon, but some people don't even be intimate on their honeymoon. Yeah, like I think I heard one or two people say that they were not intimate on their honeymoon. Yeah, that's say, crazy. What? That's crazy. <laughs> Couldn't be me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be me. You know what I'm saying? Listen, we listen. We're gonna have at it, cause boy. The honeymoon's supposed to be the honeymoon at the end <laughs> of the day, right? But here's the thing, right? Like, here's the, here's, now, now what, what is the solution, right? What's the advice for the people? Because we can easily sit there and say, don't give up, don't give up, right? But I want y'all to think deeply about this, right? I want y'all to think, if I give up now, what am I giving up later? Right? If I give up now, what am I giving up later? Because if I can't complete this now, then I'm not sure if I can complete other things later down the line, no matter what the case may be. Mm -hmm. If I make this, if I break this vow to God right now, then I'm going to be breaking other vows or whatever for the rest of my life. But some people have to come to grips with, dang, we're in this situation and I'm part of it. We always want to point the finger to the other individual as you're the reason why. But the reality is, is that I'm part of this too. I'm I'm the one that's messed up on my part and I wasn't clear on this, that, and the third. And I should be more mindful of the fact that I messed up in these situations that put us in these positions. But at the same time, the other individual needs to sit there like, this is what I did wrong in the situation. All right, now that we got our wrongs out of the way, how do we come to grips and fix it? We're always wanting to point the finger at one another and what you did wrong, but never what I did wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And even even in our in our marriages or whatever prior to, like there were a lot of things that I did wrong, right? And I'm like, man, any relationship, like I did a lot of things wrong. I messed up a, a lot. However, right, I do my best to fix those issues for them never to happen again. I feel like we're a little bit more mindful now. We're a little bit more slow, 
to being like, okay, mm. like even with shopping or whatever, like, you know, to furnish our home, it was like, we wasn't like, okay, just because you got this or just because you got that, that means you can go out and just get the most expensive thing possible. No, like you got to be able to manage and yeah. be smart. And I feel that, you know, we have to learn how to manage our marriages and our relationships and everything in our parenting and our faith. Like, it's a lot. I know it's a lot, y'all. But at the end of the day, here's what I always, always, always say. God's going to get glory. It ain't even about me. Mm -hmm. Because even if I die tomorrow, I, I know that I, I put my all in today. Let me say that again. Yeah. Even if I die tomorrow, I know I put my all in today. Not yesterday, not three years ago, not five years. Today, I put all of what I needed to do into today, mm -hmm. right? And I just think that that's just the, the mindset that we should take on. And for the husbands out there, yo, be patient with your wives. Like, be patient with your wives. You know, sometimes they can they they can be emotional, but there's reasons behind their emotion. You know, it's just how they they're created. It's not, you know, I don't think that my wife intentionally wants to be emotional. But the when circumstances are high, when the lights get bright, you know, palms get sweaty, backsides get tight. You know, what I'm saying it it could be a little tense, but we're yeah. created to be. The ones that comfort, that console, that reassure, you know. So men, be That's patient true. with your wife. Yeah. I think what comes to my mind in all of this um, is the triangle. Mm. The triangle and, and it's always, I feel like the triangle is always like based on marriage. Mm-hmm. And while that's awesome, and I totally agree with it, first and foremost, it could really be for any relationship. Mm -hmm. And so the triangle is, you know, the husband and wife are at the bottom, and the closer they get to God, which is at the top, the closer they get together, mm -hmm. right? So you are becoming yes. a more tight niche. The closer you both, oh. not just one, mm -hmm. the closer you both get to God, which is at the top of that triangle, yep. the closer y'all want to get together. Yeah. That's in a marriage, a relationship, a relationship with your child, a relationship with a boss, a relationship with whoever it is, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I, I think that's just what comes to my mind is just make sure you're being intentional about spending time yeah. with God. Yeah. Yeah. Who is our source? Who's our source? I said this to a brother um, the other day on Instagram. Um, he recently got engaged and um, I mentioned to him and I said, well played to, in my opinion, the best part of being a man is being a husband and a father at the same time. But also remember this, and this is what I learned, I say, a threefold accord is not easily broken. So no matter what or who tries to rip apart your family, right? Understand that the three, four, the core is that he's the door, but it's you, your wife, and God. As long as y'all tied up together, there's nothing that, that can break y'all, right? There's nothing that can break y'all unless you allow it to break, right? So I feel that there's a husband out there that just needs to have that faith, right? There's a next step, there's a next hurdle that you gotta take. There's another leap that you gotta take. There's a wife out there. There's a mother out there. There's a woman out there. That listen, if 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 at all, if if anything else, if all else fails, yo, like go all in, go all in. You it may fail, it may not, but you'll never know unless you actually take the leap. Like we took this leap to Texas. Yeah. You just never know. So far, so good, right? So far, so good. And I am excited for what God is doing. You know what I'm saying? So as we end this, I have a question, babe. Well, you know, a little funny note here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, what is the one thing that irks you the most about me? And we'll go vice versa if you're comfortable. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. 
I think the most thing that irks me about you, oh my God, there's so many. It's like that. <laughs> I'm <was like, laughs> I think it is being like your messy. Like, you didn't like. I don't feel like I'm that crazy messy. <laughs> Like, if I take my socks off at the end of the night and lay them by the bed, like, I don't think that that's, like... Things like that happen. just drive me insane. Your socks, your clothes. Like, there's a laundry basket. You use it, huh? I do use the laundry basket. <laughs> In the sink, if you're, like, shaving or, like, doing your hair or whatever the case is. Like, and there's stuff that drops on the sink or whatever. I mean, just wipe it up. If there's food on your plate and you're putting it in the sink... Just throw it in the trash. A bad dude. The things like that. <laughs> you asked. I told. Okay. You can't get offended if you ask me the question. I'm not offended. The word that offends you is the word that you need. But I do think that you over Amen. Hit the amen button. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's there. Okay, but uh, it's going to come for my neck. Yeah, <laughs> I think the thing that irks me the most—you said that real strong—is because it does. Why are you chopping between your teeth? Is <laughs> your impatience? Yeah, I'm so impatient on that. Yo, I could, y'all, I can literally. I'm so like, impatient, y'all. Be driving to the store. And it and it's like in the store could probably like 15, 20 minutes away. <laughs> She'll call me five minutes afterwards. You not there yet? You not there yet? And I'm like, yo. Uh, if you're I talking, I can need text messages. Well, if you're talking about today, it's because I saw a video of you on Instagram that you posted on your story at Zach's brother. And I feel like you should have been already at the store. No. And here you are at Dutch Brothers just getting yourself a little worth coffee. I didn't think you were supposed to be growing up grocery shopping. I was doing that <laughs> on the way. I was literally doing it on the way. It was all in real time. And by the time you had called me, I was all almost done in in Kroger. Okay. I be feeling like you be wanting me to be the the superhero. <laughs> Where I where I get this like I could just have this like instant transmission where I can just pop in and pop out like yeah like and teleport like I'm a, I'm a human being too. <laughs> you do spend a lot of time making videos in between, and I'm like, where are you? And rather than you be like, oh, we should make a video, you'll be like, I'm already on my way. <laughs> because by the time you call me, I could be on my way. But if I but I am impatient. I'm going to be honest about that, and I'm not afraid to say. You know, what is true. I, I'm a patient. I'm very patient. That's one of my biggest flaws. You gotta work on that. And I have been working on it, but I haven't that far. <laughs> Jesus oh, help me the right yard. <laughs> I'll be real. It is. I I have no patience. You gotta fix that. <laughs> so I have no patience. Cause Jesus what? help me and take the wheel. Cause I'd be like, yo, I'd really be in the wet. And she <laughs> sit there and like hit me up. You're not there yet. Oh my God! Huh? <laughs> yep. All right, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna work. Y'all gotta pray for you, girl. All right. Are you gonna fix your cleaning? Pray for it. Pray for me. Pray for me. Am I gonna fix my cleaning? I think I'm all right. Like the the thousand shoes at the front door. You know the right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, everybody, we pray that y'all had a blessed uh, time with us today. Um, listen, uh, you know, if you if you felt encouraged, leave a comment below. Subscribe to the podcast. All right. And we're going to keep these things going. Yes. Because now we actually have the time to sit and set up. And we got a little system and hurting me in forward right here. So I'm excited uh, for what the Lord is doing in this place and in our lives in general and i'm excited for what we're doing in your life as well too if you feel led go ahead and drop a donation into our chemistry um dollar sign be a shakeable method go ahead and drop that uh in you know to help us keep it going to help us keep pushing forward 
who knows, we may end up having some form of a conference or something like this Sunday with y'all and be doing this live. So we'll see what happens and see what the world is. But go ahead and share this with a friend, share this with a family member, share it with somebody that, you know, they needed to hear this message today. Okay. But then let us go out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come up with now. Thank you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, dear Lord. We just thank you for the words that were um, said today, the conversation that we had today, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all of what you are doing in our lives. Dear God, let me just ask you, Father, to bless the airwaves and bless anybody that has been watching this Heavenly Father. We ask that you be glory out of this podcast, out of the glory out of the situations that are going to a wise trumpet, dear God. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the challenges that you have given us, dear God, so that you can get called glory out of it. And it is a word. We thank you for the marriages that are going to uh, uh, rectify the situation. People that are going to uh, elevate and be inspired and make a move, Heavenly Father, with full faith and no worry, dear God. We Thank you for worship. I feel Jesus right here. Great. Amen. Yeah. Let us sing so our kids. And our boys are up. Yes. And they're up. Peace, y'all.